the holy gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Come, Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love and renew the face of the earth. Amen. You made the cut. 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 Every single one of you, you on the live stream, made the cut. You're on the team. Every single one of you are on the team. Now, maybe you're wondering how you can be on the team if you miss the tryouts. There weren't any tryouts. You were identified way back before you were born. You were heavily recruited at great cost to the owner of the team. Despite all those voices that said to the owner, including your own, really, he's not worth it. She is not a good pick. The owner said, I want him. I want her. And this owner gets what the owner wants. It's settled. You are on the team. And I am on the team. Jesus said, it was not you who chose me. It was I who chose you. It is a really big deal. You were chosen. You can feel special because you were chosen by the Holy One to be on the team. Now, at the same time that you feel chosen, you can feel humble because the owner of this team is known for choosing mm, not the cream of the crop. (laughs) You can feel special and humble at the same time. We all can. We are on Team Jesus because he chose us. 
Hearing today's gospel, it sounds like Jesus prefers to be identified not so much by his name, but by his mission, which is love. So, Team Love is probably a better name for us. Team Love. Jesus came to embody God's love. He gave himself completely for that purpose. He laid down his life for us, for each of us, and for everyone outside. He calls us to abide in that love, to make our home in it, make our home in being chosen, in being called, in being empowered for a purpose. He calls us to receive that love constantly. It's not a one and done, but to receive that love that says, you're chosen, you're mine, not because of anything you've done, but because who I am. We make our home in that love. We find security in that love. And then we're asked to share it, to love, to serve, to be together team love for the world. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And Jesus says, I appointed you to go and bear fruit fruit that will last. You remember the three things that last. Faith, hope, love, and the greatest of these is team love. Good job. Um, This is our weekly gathering of team love. We are here to remember our mission and to be reconnected with Jesus, the source of our love. That lasting fruit that naturally grows out of our relationship with Jesus is love. Love was mentioned 14 times in today's readings, so I'm not slow. I knew what my job was today to talk about love. It has to be our focus. But it's a little bit daunting to preach about love because it feels so overused, that word. It feels so hard sometimes to identify or to feel like we can meet the expectations of love. It helps to know that Jesus' words in today's gospel come to us the night before he died. And he had just done something shocking as a way to teach his disciples what he meant about love, what love looks like. And you remember what it is that he did. He got up from the table and washed their feet. Jesus took on the role of a servant to perform a necessary and menial task. Right? Back in those days, dusty roads meant dirty feet. And if there was a servant in the house, guess who got the job of washing the feet? It was the servant. And Jesus got up, washed their feet, and said, Now that's what love looks like. And that's what I'm asking you to do. Wash feet. Wash one another's feet. Love isn't really that complicated. It's washing feet. It's feeding people. It's welcoming them. As Joe said to the children, it's standing with them and for them. It's recognizing needs, kind of having our eyes out. Who needs something? How can I help? It's serving with tenderness and compassion and letting others do the same for us. That's love. 
So where did you see love this week? Really, in your life, where did you see it? When did you love this week? When did somebody love you? You know, identify a a moment, a gesture, an act that was love. It can be easier to recognize love in the heroic and dramatic actions. On TV, I saw some of those this week, and you probably did too. I saw two barbers drop their scissors in the middle of doing a haircut because they had glanced out the window a toddler who had escaped the care of her parents and was running into traffic, and they ran out to rescue her. Yeah, that's love. I saw, maybe you did too, the police officer who ran into a burning building to rescue people. That's love. I read about the world's central kitchen going back into Gaza after just burying seven of their workers who were killed in an airstrike in the war. They went back in to feed people because that's love. We have examples and we see them week after week of the highest forms of love. What Jesus said, there's nothing greater than being willing to lay down your life for your friend or for a stranger. It's that kind of unselfish love that we all hope we can rise to if the circumstances ask us of it. But I also saw love this week in the circle of family and friends gathered around a woman who, this morning I got news, died too young. But cancer didn't get that message. But her family and her friends showed up with her in the tender acts of feeding and of presence. That's love on a less grand scale And I I saw love this morning with parents bringing their kids up to the children's message, walking their mermaids over to children's church. That's what love looks like. Last Sunday, almost 40 people were here in the afternoon for a caregiver's workshop wanting to learn about resources for caregivers, how to be equipped to do the work of love day in and day out, how to do it for themselves, how to support others who find themselves in a caregiving season of life. That's love. And I know so many of you are in that season of caregiving, of struggle. Day in, day out, challenge the equivalent of washing feet. That's love. Taking care of people is constant. Feet get dirty and need to be washed again. It's no soon that the dishes are put away and the pots are cleaned up, then it's time to figure out what the next meal is. Diapers need to be changed. How many times a day? Eight to ten. <laughs> it's a lot of diaper changing. That's love. And our friends, our coworkers, our loved ones need attention. They need listening. They need encouragement. That's love. <sighs> team love, team Jesus. That's why we're here today, to remember that work of love that I know so many of you are doing so constantly, that's what it's about. That's what we're called to. We cannot do it alone. Jesus is the source of our love. Jesus is God come down in a human body to love us and to fill us with love so that we have something to give. You maybe thought it was Christmas for a minute today when we were singing Joy to the World, that Christmas hymn. It's Psalm 98, though. That was the appointed psalm for today, and you might find yourself humming it 
as you do some of your routine acts of love this week, at home, at work, at school, in the community, the Lord has come with the blessings of his love, the wonders of his love. And we're witnesses to that. And we're here today for it to be poured into our hearts so that it can naturally radiate out from us. You are not on your own as you try to be faithful in love and in service. The Lord is with you, and so are your teammates. Thanks be to God. Amen.